see what to expect there as well. And oh, the Hooper, the Hooper number 25 Porsche uh, up over the grass at Adenauer forced stream from those cars coming behind him. But this time they're definitely close enough to get that to get that draft. Uh, when we get onto the three kilometre straight of the Dothinger Hole. Dennis Marshall for the number 22. Oh, trying to work out which it's an Audi that's out front, and now all of a sudden, Formula Ford style, they burst out, bomb burst to flood the track three wide briefly. The Mercedes car six knew that there wasn't quite the width of a Mercedes AMG to squeeze by those two Audis, and it's the share of sport Audi that benefited there, gaining two positions down the long straight. There was no way through, and he had to leap on the anchors. So it was number one, Dennis Lind, who lost one, two positions coming into the braking zone at the Cielo, set the fastest lap of the ah. race at 8.14.9, but he's been overtaken for the lead from the 27 Lamborghini of uh, Marco Mapelli. That was at Schwedenkreutz, so I really charged for at least second position. Christopher Haase got a good run on which of the, the 33 of Sven Muller and absolutely swamped by. There was almost contact, though, between the Audi Quattro livery 39 Audi and the number three Porsche 911 GT3 R car. Kevin Estra might have been able to dispatch Neil Verhagen in this move as well. Moment or two ago, out of Antonius Bucher and got the inside line that he's been wanting for the last couple of runs into Tiergarten. So Estra is up another position, now into 13th. Plan, uh, if you go to RadioLeMond.com and to the Nürburgring 24 pages, uh, you should be able to see the race there now. So join us in vision and sound if you're listening in now. Needs it to be at a higher rate of knots. Perhaps it's in the higher rev range and the higher speed. Here comes the 296. Antonius Bucher is a bit further away, so Pittard will have the real estate. He's going to go to the right-hand side of the Swiss driver and sweep around the outside of Antonius Bucher into second place. That, for me, all happened running into Schwabenschwanz, where Raffaele Marciello was tucked in behind a full machine. And David Pittard, you just look like you just threw the dummy there to <laughs> Marciello coming up the, the uh, oh the Dottinger hole, but. Goodness, Maro Engel gets a run through Flugplatz and Marcello really delayed coming through Flugplatz and Engel goes past. So two Mercedes drivers nearly touch on the entry to Schwedenkreuz. That's 260 kilometers an hour at least going into Nue leading that. However, moments ago, there was, there was a crash at just on the exit of Brightside and that was which car? It was a Porsche the off the road. Speed Porsche, number 24. Line speed, oh, having to go around the outside of a slower BMW. Later on, as coming into the Caracciola carousel, one of the Audis stuffs it up the inside of the Dacia Logan at the carousel, and Nico Mentel has to read it and go around the out car. I'll just break away from that for a moment because we now have potential drama for another Porsche, the 184 car, which is spewing fluid, it looks like, from the front left. Is the tyre also going on in GT4 as well? Because there's now a BMW M4 out front in that division for Mikael Schrei, car number 87, who has regularly run with Hoffa Racing in the past. Then the seven is in that area so that the drivers can slow down and advance as well. Maro Engel has to go two wheels on the grass going down the Foxhole. That's one of the fastest parts on the circuit to get past the BMW 3 Series. And goodness me, that was a close one. Raffaele Marcello following behind and a huge kick of dust thrown up by Engel's Mercedes and his colleague Marcello's going, watch the paint job, watch the paint. So the exact position, oh, oh. Mercedes on the, on the dirt there as well for Raffaele Marcello, really furthering your point there, P-Mac in the 240i Racing Cup division, but he rather got, it was a pincer movement for Maro Engel, had to get out of the power, and I wonder why Raffaele Marciello had basically shortcut that second part of the Yokar Armour S. Maro Engel pops out then on his right shoulder, and the two of them drag racing their way down to the left and the right-hander at Goodyear Spanger. Marciello just about wins in that battle, but what about the flip of the tail oh, from the Mercedes as he managed to squirrel his way through? I surely we've done enough, haven't we? No. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Marco is it, it, immediately the Ab Sport line, uh, Lamborghini limping in, presumably the puncture. Marco Mapelli handed over to Sheldon Van 
Sheldon, Kelvin van der Linde, and it has got a long left way rear to puncher. go. Left rear puncture. So absolutely beguiling, but they had gone so well. But now, but this is typical of what you get in the Nurburgring 24 hours. Uh, you heard the voice there of Peter Snowden, who's joined us as well. Pretty hectic start, as we expected. The drivers have had to be on their metal and not what you want. Abt are a very good team, very experienced team. The supreme stint leading this race, and it's another feather in his cap. But traffic is there oh. all the time, Klaus Backler. Uh, among many of the drivers just getting knitted in and where you back off for a nanosecond in this class you're going to be oh, passed by those behind round. past and then hit up the derriere Schumacher oh. S is on the uh, Grand Prix track I think uh, and he got hit by actually got hit by a slow car that he was passing and one of the cup class Porsches I think that also uh, went around there in fact no is it one of the GR Supras? It is. Save everybody else, but it's now the collateral damage he's got to avoid of that tyre floating around. What he really needs to happen now, actually, is that carcass to fail completely and discard itself of the rim yeah. and get rid of it, and then that's not floating around. The wheel will stay intact then. Need that rubber out of the way. Kevin Estra coming. Ours. And Kevin Hes Estra's had another drama as he both drafting up behind the number one Audi a few moments ago with the Drudy behind the wheel <laughs> that was brave going round the outside coming up into Tiergarten why are you sounding surprised at Kevin well, after being brave sorry well, that is no disrespect, fair, John, but fair point well made yes, it's, it's what he does early part of the race Patrick Niederhauser just losing a position as well going into turn one a minute or two ago just gone out and had a short pit less than the 30 seconds I suspect, suspect. no I suspect not um, it, it tends to be a minute plus what they'll say is they'll take the time you're short and they'll times it by a multiplier um, and they also might ask you to come and do that straight away rather than add it on to your next pit stop uh, let's take a look. Oh, hello. Uh, Jamie Whitcup meeting Mercedes AMG Top Dogs this weekend since Stephen Albert. Can anyone at the ring find out if there are plans for Triple Eight to enter this race next year in the future? I don't know, but shall we start the rumour now? It's out the bag, John. It's out the bag. I think the just also out the bag is Kevin Estrin just picked off another place. He's moved up past... Oh, no, just spun it. Estrin oh, spun round. He's hit the wall. The he's he's tailed, tailed into the wall. He hasn't, no, the walls are tight. The rear wings are OK, but he has had a rotation at Tiergarten. There and it's uh, he had just passed yeah. Ferrari number 20, a W10 DM by uh, Rinaldi. But Kevin is sitting there, he's flicking the paddles, trying Can't to get, get going yeah. again. He has got it going, he kicks the tail it's around. He was facing him. 180 degrees away from where he should have been. The 4.2 flat six will not breathe properly. He's cleared the two cars quite easily and comes into the final corner, hits the curb with the right front. But I reckon Snowy has absolutely nailed that. I think that tyre must have been going down. It's the loaded tyre, the working tyre, as he turns in there, Peter. Yeah. Yes, he did hit the, the kerb with the right front, but not enough to spin him around. What I would explain... Moment. Lucas Stoltz on his way back towards us here at the start line, dragging up uh, behind the third place number three of Daniel Junkadella. And Catella steers to the right-hand side. Uh, sorry, to the uh, eighth place, Young Catella. Joel Eriksson now behind the wheel of the 40, who is the outright king of the mountain at Pikes Peak, one of the oldest motor racers in the world. Climbing up through 150-odd corners and uh, starting it's six and a half miles high and going that's, to... That's because he's not wired up correctly. He's not, there's something as clearly wrong that. with And I mean it entirely as a compliment. No, that's I'm the 88 M4 uh, making his way to pitch, and finally. It, again, that's the KCMG car. That was a class leader, Josh Burton, Burton, Eduardo Liberati and Martin Rump, the Estonian-Italian-Australian combination. Uh, and they've got a 332 penalty as well for disregarding is the experimental class for things that don't easily fit elsewhere. Now, if you've been watching recent years, GT3, GT4, how do they stack up? GT3, full of wings, GT4, smaller, limited wings. Somewhere between the two is the GT2, but what's the speed differential? Fastest lap so far for that class-leading XPX Mercedes. Eight minutes, 31, fastest race lap. However, what they do have instead 
is they have a local digital TV service that you can choose between English and German commentary. So if you are here on site, uh, you put an aerial up and you have a receiver box, like a free view box as it would be in the UK, a digital terrestrial, envious of you and Snowy having done that. Um, if you weren't aware, Owen works for Mazda in the UK, and he said, we've just done a thousand miles around the UK in, uh, last November in an MX-5 on totally uh, 28th and uh, in 20th for the 28 car and 20th in SP9. Now we're going to get a code 60 because we've got a, what looks like uh, a Cayman oh. uh, into the barriers. Uh, not sure exactly whether it's on the fluke plat. It's, 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 it's the right hand after the fluke plat, and it takes uh, the tyres off the off the barrier there. So yeah, having yeah. to blow all the debris that that 189 Porsche has left all over the track. But it's literally got to blow it all back out of the way because you don't want to repeat what we saw with the Vulcan Hall's car uh, during qualifying. And uh, Dan Harper, by the way, just going by Matteo Caroli a couple of minutes ago as they came off the north loop onto the start finish line of the Grand Prix circuit. So that's a new fourth position for the BMW junior team, Rutronic Porsche, uh, down into fifth, put back together just after Fluke Platz. The number 82 leads SP83 in. Uh, 67th position. That's the 2021 BMW, excuse me, I've mentioned that one. Subaru Technical International STI, that WRX is 49th and leads LG82. Oh, that's the latest version. Then we're into the top classes. AMG Team HRT, the untroubled GT2 version of that new AMG GT. Now that's in 34, trying to find some kind of tiny... So you'll go two miles an hour faster than the guy in front when you can. And there's your Pecorello trying to go down the outside and threads the eye of the needle. That's the Tufa going into the Yokohama S at the start of the race and the battle for 19th, 20th... Uh, 20th, 21st, 22nd, actually, as they went across now the Now that, because if you thought the Tankstella model shot was good, Mm. Then that's a whole different level. Oh. Different level. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, Lucas Stoltz just brushing the ball as close as I'm about to brush to my credit limit when I go to that, <laughs> that, that gift shop. Oh, nearly leaves a bit of Mercedes paint on a BMW M Power sponsored. And reel in the gap that currently stands at 22 and a bit seconds. Side by side over the line between Falcon tyre Porsche number 33 yes on the inside and the 40 Audi to the outside so that was a straight fight for would you believe 18th position but it doesn't really matter does it no quarter ass or given double DTM champion Timo Scheider on the outside maybe giving a little bit of a shove there just wheel arch to wheel arch uh, Gustav is very much missed by all of us in the broadcast community wrote some hellishly good books as well uh, a man after your own heart mr mckay did like finding out the far end of a whatnot about porsches and wrote some very very good books i highly recommend with those hazard hazard lights flashing and that oh. beamer will be heading straight to the pit lane what about the amgs no they don't need to pit on this lap but so so busy through hohenrein that time john Lucas Stoltz looking down the inside again of Hunkadea down into turn one. He's got the position, the side by side, he knows us ahead, but of course he's got to do a bit of a block pass here and he's got a wee bit wide. That'll allow the green Mercedes to try and get through. And in there as well, we've got Adam Christodoulou. 55, the cars behind, 848.6, 846.3 and an 8.48.9, Chris Dulu, the quickest of... It's been back in the pits, and it's now back out on track, according to that. That's the 184, yeah. Not 181. Oh, sorry, 184. Oh, so not Peter Cates' car. 181 yeah. is Peter Cates' car. 184 right. was the one that was dropping fluid. Correct. It, early on, K Kramer Racing's SP7 yes. car. Sorry, my fault, yes. Damaged radiator earlier on. Oh, collision on the... Well, it was a leading trio but a leading quadruple, oh. oh dear. BMW in the barrier, and yep. that was confusion as the white BMW was being lapped by an SP9 car, and that was a big hit, actually. For, I think that's the first time in the race he's been in, Johnny. Gunnar, the angle, yeah. and then, yeah, so, yep, so, oh, as Maxi Martin nearly gets into the back of the Falkenspiegel Team Monschau Ferrari going through traffic. 
and does get by in a in a flash but yeah a little bit of contact there i think as martin goes by a bit of confusion i think over yellow flag possibly um so we'll see what race control will think about that one for a second but a very fast lap time 814.829 for adam christodoulou in the number two get speed mercedes that's the red and black car Meanwhile, number 96, Rutronic Porsche of Matteo Cairoli, former winner two years ago, chasing down the BMW Junior Team machine, the number 72 car, which, oh, as Cairoli pops out to the outside as they head towards Tiergarten, side by side, who's got the bravery? And it's Cairoli just, Max Hess backs out of it as they go past the Foxtail Manta into the Tiergarten. That was the, if you were to clip a 10 second video to show someone the Nürburgring, it's two SP9 cars going side by side into Tiergarten with an Opel Manta coming up ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, that, that is this race encapsulated, Yes, really. Uh, if you don't understand it, watch that back again, and there you go, you still won't understand it. But it's com and it's completely bonkers, but that's why we keep coming back yeah. here. Year in, year out, as the 96 Porsche and the 72 BMW start to lock horns, sweeping across the nose of the junior team machine then. This is the battle for fourth and fifth, and around the outside from Max Hesse into Bill Stein Kerver. And the Goodyear scoring tower away in the distance, but forcing that Porsche up the curb of Matteo Cairoli, who is not a guy who takes that sort of treatment lying down. Well, Cairoli got the move done at the Tiergarten, but then Hesse said, ah, oh, you think so? Root out of Hohenrein was somewhat compromised there, so has to tuck back into line in the number 33 Porsche behind the Audi that it is battling with. There may be an opportunity though for Muller to squeeze up the inside of Mike Rockenfeller in that 40 car and in fact does exactly that down at the in, well probably when they stopped actually so yes it's a, it's all levelling out once again and Bilstein with the advantage once more or rather uh, gets me with the advantage over Bilstein Audi and Lamborghini battle into Arenberg and the five car just a little bit late to defend that machine that is in the oh and loses it on the entrance to Schwedenkreuz even in a lower class car that is so fast through there the five it look like it's a 522 was it the five five two it's twirling around 522 from SRS team Sorg Rensport um, Christian Leukers from Cole Barrier. It looks like a, a bit of misunderstanding with a oh, slower front wheel drive car and goes oh, head on into the arm Cole Barrier there and bounces back into the circuit. Outside of one of the smaller Hyundais, and that's done a lot of damage <sighs> to the front of the BMW. And then after that, so. Now, as well, now what's happened to number 227, Bjorn Greisman? That was Bird going in the barrier, I reckon, uh -huh. ahead of him. Yeah. Uh, oh, front right. Big damage on the front right of that machine. Scraping along the floor. Oh, that's a horrible noise. And he's quite big. Meanwhile, a couple of seconds ago, two Audis running side by side. Is that Rocky on the inside? No, it's the 22 Audi, in fact, and the five machine, similar R8. And car 22... Dennis Marshall for car collection. Thank you. In the Audi R18 throwback livery. Uh, it was you know, to celebrate three wins in a row. So you may be approaching at, let's say, half the speed, but where do you know where to brake? You know, the braking reference point has completely changed now because you can theoretically go deeper into the corner because you're not carrying as much speed. That's the kind of knowledge that you need. Trying to chase down the number four car of Eduardo Mortara and gets the job done for fourth position on the Dottinger Ho, getting a good draft there on Mortara, on the Swiss driver, the Formula E. Got a setting sun, that's no doubt an easy mistake to make. And then Mortara made a further error, getting tangled up with a back marker into the Yokohama S and just ran a bit too deep. Missed the apex, thankfully didn't find the gravel, but he wasn't far away there. If you go straight on at the first corner, you're going to be in the stones and probably needing outside assistance. 
Neil Verhagen still Neil Verhagen in the number 72 BMW Junior team still batting away with the 96 Rutronic Porsche the blue and yellow high the big brightly coloured Porsche for Rutronic driven by Julian Anlauer and Anlauer has it for now as they shoot underneath the BMW M Power bridge but just back and forth back and forth all the time side drafting one another and Julian Andler getting the Talladega side draft there on for Hagen to get that position back. Brilliant stuff between two great young drivers. Korean, quite rightly, as Hondas and the Elantra ends. Number 830 at Lisa Class, number 831 is the All American lineup. Uh, but second currently is the Heiko Hamill driven Share Sport Cupra. So Share of Sport, BHX, yes, that one, well known for racing Audis in the top class, actually have, well... Uh they are just, there was big smiles there yesterday, Johnny. They're, as always, Frickadelli go racing to, to really enjoy it and enjoy it by winning, but enjoy it by being together as well. And they're, uh, they're looking so strong right now as we're nearly at the five-hour mark. I think they would have taken this when we rolled in here earlier Too in the week. Too right. Too right. So... Now, hang on a minute, because this Ferrari, is it going slowly? I think it's got a puncture. The number 30 Ferrari is going slowly oh. on the Dottingel Hoare. And the number three Green Hell car, Verviche, there in third in the leading Audi. So it's Mercedes from Mercedes from Audi. And then the first of the BMWs, Marco Wittmann, Rover BMW number 98. They have been sneaking their way up the order. They're up into fourth. They're in the hunt as well. We thought BMW had a difficult start to the race in the first couple of hours where they're coming good now. Yeah. Bit of cooler temp now. We're down into 12 degrees ambient. The turbocharged cars, of course, both the Mercedes and the Audis are naturally aspirated. The BMW is the first turbo car effectively now with the problems of the, the Fricadelli Ferrari and the cool air will help that. Yeah, and uh, it's one of those twin scroll straight six BMW mm. engines, isn't it? Whereas before in the M6, used to be a twin turbocharged V8. And uh, speaking of BMWs, one picking off Eddie, Eddie Mortara there in the braking area for Tiergarten. That will be giving Marco Fitman fourth position in the 98 Rover Racing BMW. And Julian Andlauer a couple of moments ago on the other Rover Racing BMW. So Augusto Farfus jostling for <laughs> position with the 161 and where was Julian Anlauer going to go? I think he thought about going between the two of them there briefly. There was a touch on the rear left. Oh, and a massive touch. Talk about a headbutt into a yellow flag zone and a debris flag as well from Julian Anlauer on the rear of Augusto Favas who will not be happy about that. Drilling the rear of... TR, this is the car that's... Um, Filled with John Marc Fino, Jean Philippe Imperato, Carlos Antunes Tavares, and Francois Wallace. These are they are all uh, they are all members, of board level members of the Stellantis oh. uh, group. Sorry to cut across yes. you. Just getting another Austria. viewpoint of Andorran driver Jules, Jules Gounon getting the flick out of Fair Siphon. He got a snap of. I think we'll be going out again in uh, the next hour. Uh, TCR Astra with the Stellantis management group in it. Uh, too fast in the pit lane, that'll be a minute. Penalty next time. There we go, they come in. The 99 BMW, after a close duel at the Dottigaho, Augusta Farfus was hit hard by Julian Andler in the 96 machine while breaking for the Hochrein Ho chicane uh, in but front of a double yellow. yellow. Flags yes, as well. yeah. yeah. Uh, hit hard in the rear, but managed to hold position. Uh, what did... F found one another, yes. The BMW was trying to go around the outside and has obliterated its steering because of a slight misjudgment. It's left the Schmickler Performance Porsche in the wall. And was that the 102 BMW? It's the black and red, no, it's the 101 car. And there are now yellow flags, or at least white flags, covering this ailing Vulcan horse BMW at Schwabenschwanz and heading for Galgenkopf. What a shame. What a shame. The Schmickler is 5.62. Uh, they were the class pole setter in the Vs. This time we had a setup issue. It can be contact, it can be weather, it can be so many different things. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, Manti was heartbreaking uh, to watch that happen. Yeah, awful, wasn't it? I, looked like the tyre came off the bead mm. uh, as he as he turned in. Yeah, I don't so. know if he ran slightly off the track earlier in the lap. Uh, I didn't really see, but um, it's hard to understand how that would have happened otherwise. Uh, it, uh, quite clearly, Clement eh? Estra didn't know uh, how it had happened either. You could see by his, by his body language. Mm, you know, it's about... I'm nodding here because, you know... You know and, and it's not unique to you either, God, Peter. No. You know this, I know this, and you know, right. we've got Adam Christodoulou about to come and sit down and yep. talk to us as well uh, when we when we finish with you. And, you know, he will he will know exactly the same start, sort of, yeah. of stories. It is. I mean, sabotage is a strong word, but that's exactly what happens because people care only about winning and they lose all proportion of what's, you know, right and what's wrong. And these things happen. And unfortunately for them, um, if they've raced against me and something like that happened, it'll be in there. I've written it down. I wrote everything down, <laughs> you know? I, I wrote everything down. Come on, then. I want to know. Uh, is this going to be out for Christmas? Are we going to get it the early part of next year? What, what do, we... do you know what, John? I've got a plan, um, which is a very amateurish plan, um, because I have never written a book more to motorsport than F1 or, or IndyCar or some of the more formulaic uh, series, formulas and tracks that, uh, yeah, that we all see every weekend. Um, a message from Aston Martin says, go and have a nice cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you like, back in the car? I'd have to, can I just say, I'd have to get into that after Aston Martin suite where all that tea is, by yeah. the way. Uh, yeah, is it that, still there? Yeah, well, I assume so. All right, OK. <laughs> there, there you go, Strangy. He gained so much ground, and there's been a driver change there as well. As Julian Aula and Lower pops oh, out of the carousel and briefly tags the back of one of the Porsches. Easy to do. Anlau has been a bit frantic, a bit erratic during this uh, stint, during which they run in the back of somewhere. He ran in the back of Augusto Farfus yeah, into right. yellow flags, into Tiergarten as well. Yeah, Marco Wittmann uh, was on a bit of a charge, but could not hold back the number four Mercedes. Philip Ellis at the wheel of that for Team. That keeps you coming back. It's just the best track in the world. Like nothing compares to it. Uh, the biggest circuit we've got. Oh. Michael well, Vittman having a go round the outside of the... And the thing is, we don't have that to spare no. because, like, this race is about who pushes it to the limit. Um, ding, ding, seconds out round two as Phil Ellis is badly away again. And I had to get that done before passing the intervention vehicle. Could yeah. not afford to be too abreast to going exactly. through that at uh, uh, Schwedenkreuz. No, uh, but the, the differences between pace in these cars are neglig negligible, as we're seeing Julian Andler in the Routronic Racing Porsche going past the Lamborghini. Oh. Right, Adam, don't look at me like that, Snoy. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you. Neil. Say hi to Rebecca for me, won't you? Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Neil Vargan out of the BMW junior team car. That is it. at the moment sitting in 11th place. Dan Harper behind the wheel. Uh, uh, Right, stop now, right, say, say no more, JP and PMAC, thank you very much. And there, in fact, is a car off on the dust, the uh, Cayman down Look extraordinary. At this. Either side of one of the lower cla class Beautiful. cars to come through uh, the, the earlier part of the lap. Uh, ...of a back marker and rejoined the circuit. And it's oh, here we go. Porsche's getting a bit of a better run against the tail. Almost oh, rubbing it. touch. I oh, think they touch. touch. touch with Farfus. They're, they're battling along uh, Zossinger Hoa now. And it looks like, yeah, Andau has got the nose just about in front. He's on the right-hand side of the circuit, of course. When they get to there's a gantry, they go very yeah. fast through the Wait king. for the BMW oh. to come back on the left. Both of them, there you go, straight back again, you see? That's, that's Harper. Harper, yeah, Harper. Harper was Harper's right getting, there. Because getting the draft off the other car, off the other BMW. So Harper's done fourth and third to second. Yeah. Two blinks of three arms. Yeah, because he's used to side drafting off both cars and set himself through the gap. And you know what? We've seen him do that in so many NLS yeah. races. That oh. the BMW junior team races have learnt time.
thank you to them for uh, allowing us to be involved with this. This is one of our favourite broadcasts of the year, uh, and to uh, the ADAC for making it available uh, pretty much everywhere around the world. The English language... On the inside, it puts dust, just as you're trying to get your grip, your traction, uh, it, going into, into Hohenrein. It was Ricardo Feller who was two wheels in the air work straight away to decide what needed doing. They're decisive and they work really hard. Sheldon von der Linde, uh, fall Just have to accept it's part of how this place works. I think it's better, I think it's a far superior system than safety car. And I would advocate it across all formula, yeah. including that top one where they only had one, two cars and a team thing, whatever. That one. Uh, I'll do exactly the same there. Um, just very, very quickly, I'm spotting that there's uh, you talk about other classes there, John. Uh, we've had a 245 M BMW M240i. Uh, the, one, the, uh, it's not the one of the adrenaline cars, but uh, Benno Zerlin in the pits over there. And that's a different set of tyres, different quality of drivers, pros, pro-ams, etc. And yeah. go and play on this extraordinary theatre, the Nordschleifer. I, I completely agree with you. Damaged uh, BMW, it's the 331. It's the Manhattan Wheel sponsored car. It's made it back to the pits. There's damage to the front. I think a beating violation uh, of... Uh, the Code 60, seven minutes. Like really think about this. It's not ideal conditions. You have traffic, and they can still do the pole position during the race. Where our theoretical is maybe 13, so four, five, six times. Uh, and there is the confirmation for Ricardo Feller's non-respect of ta flag single. That's half a lap. Based in Germany, but uh, again, traffic is all over the place. The first two, so that's and 16. fully on the grass. Oh, Ricardo Feller Fella. going to the right side of the back mark, who's in the middle of the track. <coughs> Shelton van der Linden's quite rare, he stayed on the black stuff. He it's not too late around the world, and you've got children watching this. I suggest you stop them because this is adult content only. Through goes Fella, and, and that to me looks as if Sheldon van der Linden Had was told either told to let him by because of the four-minute penalty or that he had a problem. Yeah. Disregarding flag signals, 32 seconds plus 132 plus 232. Now, they're going to have to be very, very careful in that car because they will not like that. Shelton van der Linde has stayed behind the wheel of the 98 after his pit stop. We've got a, uh, we've got a retirement from the race official now for the number 101 BMW, one of the two Yokohama cars. That was suspension damage on that car. Uh, another big penalty coming uh, as well as some penalty points. This looks like a car that's been withdrawn. There's a lot of backslapping going on down. Oh my goodness, this three. is the number three, the Green Hell Get Speed car. Had that suspension damage, they fixed it very quickly. Maro Engel had that side-by-side -side contract contacted to Hohenrein with a Porsche Cayman. And I thought they'd done a fabulous job getting right it out, rear. but maybe there's a greater problem. <laughs> right rear shocker, wasn't it? Shocker unit. Yeah, the shape, at, suspension and the shocker unit. See? At RSL underscore studio, around the world, another half an hour has been eaten up in this race. We've got 16 and a half still to go. Oh, huge dive down the inside, up to the top of the hill on the Grand Prix circuit. The latest of late breaking by Matthias. Speechless. <laughs> Marcello getting held up coming into the pit lane a moment or two ago by the Manta. But before the pit lane speed limit line got down the left hand side. That's, you know, that's Schumacher, that's Schumacher esque. Their levels.
Uh, Kuiper Hoffman, hello Kuiper, nice to know you're there. Uh, with reference to the flashing blue positional name markers on the wind speed, as a blue flagger, I'd find this invaluable working at night in a race like this. As a driver, totally distracting if they're visible from inside. Uh, uh, it is good for, you know, you see... I think that's the Manti car going it's back to the pits. It's a Grello. Going it's to going to the back of the pits and it's nose in. That's not good. That's going not all the way good at all. Going all the way through, out to the back. Um, I've got some news uh, that will not um, be pleasing for Aston Martin. That car's gone out the back of the pits, by the way, the Grello yeah. car now. Mini getting a little bit of a love tap from Alessio Piccariello. Got a convoy of track vehicles here. Now, the Mini would drop back, right back off there. There were no flags and there is no speed limit, even at the carousel, for passing vehicles. The only thing is you cannot be alongside to the bridge just before the Clare Carousel. Now green, and the position is taken. Martin ragging it, wow. Like a rocket from a gun. Then all the way across the green curves, back on the gas, up the hill. And now what's happened there? Is there a yellow flag? There is a yellow flag. Ooh, good spot by Lucas Stoltz. The question being, was that seen by Philip Eng? Lots of headlamp flashing here. Forty as he went by. Number 33, Klaus Backler, Alessio Piccariello, and Sven Müller, Falcon Porsche, has been put in the garage and locked up for the night. On reasonably cold tyres, did get through... The good, no, he didn't not really get through Goodyear Spanger, so was already struggling there, skating through the gravel trap, but it was definitely a right-hander where he'd lost the car, so rejoined onto the second element of the Goodyear Spanger there, continued on on the black stuff, but then had yet more problems at the bottom of the hill where the car's eventually left the road. He's trying to warm the tyres up even now. Well, I say even now, we're not quite halfway round the Grand Prix record just yet, but again, the rears just have no temperature at all, it would appear, and it goes skating off into the stones, it's almost like plunging into a pool as you address something maybe that is awry at the front end of the car. But this is more bizarre. I don't quite know how Frank Stippler has ended up off the road in the very first sector of the lap, Peter. Very unusual, very unusual. And like you say, the chances of Frank Stippler making simply a driving error are incredibly low. And the number one Audi yeah. in the wall as well, at what looks like a pretty similar place, Johnny. Uh, it is. It's the first sector again. Yes, yeah, so it must be fluid. It has to be. When do you see Vervish and Stippler make mistakes?
that happen. It's, and this is Kay Kramer racing. I think this might be our class leader in Cup 2. Supra had well over a lap's advantage. I don't think you're ever going to get that in Cup 2 because they're so, so evenly matched, and that's a very high-speed entry into the first corner at the Yokohama S, and Moritz Kranz just could not get the car stopped in time, nearly cleaned somebody else out as well as they were just turning in, ignorant to the fact, the fact that the 163 was at such high speed. It's the Dacia Logan has had a huge accident with one of the GT3 Porsches, car number... 54, the dynamic Pirelli Porsche. The 54, which is substantial, but nothing compared to the poor old Logan, which does not have a straight panel on it by the looks of things. Now, as over the kerb at Schmadenkreutz goes the BMW immediately in front. But the number 20... Uh, Volkswagen team Monza Ferrari gets up into sixth, but at, at what cost? Uh, I, I think the stewards will take a pretty dim view of that one. Lady race actually uh, littered with safety cars and yellow flags. That was a strange moment for the Opel Astra down at Arenberg. Very little warning of the spin. And Nico Menzel arriving on the, the Audi Sport balloon. They are firing up, ready for a morning flight problem for one of the Huber Porsches is it the GT didn't know they have a cup car and it's the cup car per season and that's per car and per axle as Felipe Fernandez Lazo had a little bit of misunderstanding in traffic yeah. with a Hyundai driving experience machine bank of fuel on Friday night when he set that time but Carl so is only two laps into his stint in fact that was his second lap of presumably an eight-lap stint. Now, an incident involving two cars not involved in the SP9 class, but nevertheless uh, wanting a good result, and it has left them stranded. Uh, there was a spin a moment or two ago as well on the Grand Prix Strecker for one of the hot hatches. Thankfully, spinning. Speaking of difficulties for BMWs, we now have a problem for the orange and black striking livery for the car in uh, 110th position. It's actually slipping back to 113th. I reckon that is the QTQ race performance car of Petrolo. We've got drama elsewhere around the racetrack. First of all, a BMW limping back. That was the 525 car still on three inflated tyres. And now the Conrad Motorsport Lamborghini Huracan has ground to a halt at the end of the start finish straight. Brown words that they couldn't explain, hence they decided to withdraw it on safety cars. And I say, I'm sure Johnny and Peter have covered that now, but just in case you're joining the show, it's news to us to what that was. But an, an odd, that was literally as we were just going off, Chef, that car was going out. And it's, it, it's got to be, it's got to be something quite strong for this event, the Nürburgring 24 hours, which has consistently for the past 20 years drawn people from the far east to be in the lead of the class. In fact, the next car in class is a good lap behind him. So, a couple of few of the classes. A little bit of decay. You can't, uh, you can't avoid that, and there's nowhere to hide these days. 240 is parked at the side of the track. This yeah, is, one of this the is uh, Volma uh, from the, the driver in the uh, number 240, two for M240. It is we've just had a faller with quite a lot of bodywork damage. It's car. And that's Hudson back. Exactly eight and nine, the the same place, the very place you're talking about, yeah, Bruce. Facing Oh, there's two cars. Two, cars. two cars. OK, the 89 is a Hout Racing Team Mercedes. Quite hard and to I tell that from the outside. I think it's a number 15. I think behind it, I think it's a number 15. We don't have a number 15, so well, let's well, look again. That's but the unfortunate, the difficult thing for the driver of the 89 Mercedes is he needs to get out, but he's stuck against the barriers, the door on his side of the car. It's 1-5 something. He one says 1-5. That's why it's, it's secured by a post on the, on, the, on the fence there, but it's one of the Porsches. Mercedes and Raffaele Marcello closing in. That could suddenly go, go west because one of them could pick up uh, damage on the tyres. He's done fact, it. Uh, it's been but done. Marcello's done it. Marcello's done it. Into the speech bits. Yeah, straight in there. And now because You know, from time to time, one does need to sort of uh, check what's out there in the Twitter sphere. And uh, one from our... Sometime colleague Ben Constantura, she's picked up one of the many, many clips that are out there, video clips, and it's Mauro Engel showing something. He goes, hey, F1 snowflakes, what do you think of proper motorsport? <laughs> and they'll get it restarted and they're going, no, no, sunshine. That's, uh, that's, that, it's going to need more than T-cut.
Uh, absolutely it will. Right, I, I thought this would happen. The slow zone was upgraded to code 60 at Hatson Bach. Tiergarten and uh, Hernrein at abated pace, but not as disastrously slow as anybody who got one out of the circuit. Car in second place, Sheldon van der Linde suddenly saw all four sides, front, back, side, side of a BMW that's sitting in the five, track, two, car six. number 526, which is... You're going to have a longer final stage. Ah, oh, problem for the racing one. Ferrari limping in fright. Right front, right front, it might be actually. Yeah, right um, front, yeah. Tyre coming off the rim, so being brought in very slowly and very. Just been talking about, just cut across before you answer that, just been talking about Mikel Ascona <laughs> leading the TCR class, and he got very, very close to, the, to one of the Porsche Caymans as he came into a slow zone. It's a constant problem for the drivers. You cannot let your attention race. The Mercedes are closing in. For sure. Well, oh, so a bit, 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 of, bit of on board here. And Marcus Winkelhock having a struggle to get past one of the uh, Toyotas there. And uh, it was a bit of, bit of dodge was going on there. You very, very rarely see that. There was one, two, three. I think there were four taps on that car. It was like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Move out of the way. When you're a Winkelhock, you're Nürburgring royalty. They should move out of the way. In fact, they should bow as he comes past. In fact, they shouldn't even be there in the first place, should no, they? not quite so. They're lucky to be on the same form. tarmac. Poor form. It's not cricket. But he will have his earpieces in listening to the action. But uh, I think one, what one has to fo focus on is the fact that uh, things change. This hasn't been a race of enormous incident. There have been mercifully low number of accidents, but there have been punctures and little setbacks for various... Uh, the same level, so that you push into the corner deeper and so on. But, yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, for me, the first of the night since was painful because there was so much accident. And at one point, we had to drive on the grass to avoid uh, the accident, so your tyres are covered in, you know, what. Um, and you're all... These Marshall points will be showing white flags now to cover the 44 car, and that Falcon tyre is virtually flat, I'm afraid mm -hmm. to say, on the rear left corner. Just starting to ripple wide of the wheel itself. Very good. Ferrari, did that have a moment uh, a couple of seconds ago, darting up the inside? Yes, it did, because it clobbered the kerb in the hands of Earl Bammer, and it sent him off onto the grass. Did just about recover that moment. That was on the way to France, spitting out from the front right corner of this Toyo Tyres car. So it's either the 70 or the 71, it's the 7 0 machine, which is well alight, and that is a brake fire. I think that front right disc has more or less exploded on the GT4 dark blue uh, Supra and sensibly whoever is driving that running over to the left hand side of the circuit on the exit of the carousel and parking it up on the grass it's left a still flaming either wheel or inner wheel arch or brake disc right in the middle of the racetrack. Seen lots of campfires at barbecues so far this weekend at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Now we have one on the track itself. Lucas Stoltz, winner of the... Uh, oh, contact! Contact between the, the number two get speed Mercedes and a TCR Hyundai. Now, was that the class leader? I think it might be, Johnny. It's up here. Stoltz yes. could be a heck of a lot quicker than he is allowing to be. Yeah. And Schiller's getting a bit more erratic with every lap here, so he's getting flustered by the presence, the mere presence of Lucas Stoltz. Let's hope they don't start taking chunks out of one another. Mercedes will not be too happy about that, but it is a clean overtake in the end to put the Bilstein cartoon car. Logan's going as fast as it can, so it wasn't necessarily with white flags. Now, how about a race on pit road between the two and the four Mercedes? Inside line for the Get Speed car, trying to elbow out the Bilstein machine. Drivers on board for this are still Stoltz and actually Krista Dulu. So there's a driver change in Mercedes number two, but... <laughs> Incredible. Ooh, it's two, um, the uh, Toyota Corolla Altus and SP3, one of them, there's two of them in the class, gets very up close and personal with an Opel Astra on the way up to Flugplatz. There's just a few start bits of sloppy contact starting to happen. Tired mind, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. We've got to remember that yeah. you know it's been a long, long night and this mm -hmm. is an endurance race not just for the cars and the machinery involved, but also 
for the nuts behind the wheel, as they're so often called. They're not nuts, you know what I mean, but they're telling off from race control regarding the driving there from the dynamic GT car. And um, it's not as if you can really enforce a penalty for a future race. A wheeling Porsche there over... That was... <laughs> You said about inclusivity, the way the ADAC would... I had a quick look at his uh, uh, profile on, on the driver database. And uh, six of this, or 4th or 6th of December 1979 he was born, making him 43 years old. So his 30th one next year means he did his first one here at th uh, 13 years old. Isn't that just fantastic? It's, uh, a t it's a time difference between here and New Zealand. I think it, you, every time you cross the date line... Well, of course, he's coming you. back in time to get here. So yeah. Well, uh, all ifs, buts and maybes, but really, what is the question? Can anybody beat the Frickadelli racing team Ferrari? What a result would that be? Oh, oh, oh. Mm, mm, mm. Unless you want Klaus Abelin to come round and slap you between mid or high or IMSA remotely. And uh, all I could hear was the, the banging music going on. So you guys know how to party when you get a result. Big moment going down to uh, stay, off, stay off the main roads if you can. Go the back roads. It's a fantastic drive. I will sure do that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Neil. Neil Verhagen. BMW Junior team and uh, print. Well, it must be your age, James. I can see that perfectly. So there is a point. You're it back to front and upside down. There is a point at the end of the race. That is is the is the important part here, uh, where if you Raffaella Marcello for EMT yeah, team Bill Stein, Oh, this is huge. This is the 186 Cayman. Yeah. Now they are um, not right in the hunt. Is it the 186? 186, the WNS yes, Motorsport yeah. car, wave jet, double wave yellow. Rises in to uh, the crew. Before I um, nip over and, and uh, get a quick bite to eat, as I... Uh, Lovely pasta today. I made, uh, I made the strategic decision earlier today, uh, and it, it, it was done on the fly. This wasn't planned. In, in 15 minutes. So the, clearly the car's good. Clearly Frickadelli run it very well in, with Rinaldi in tow. So I think now it just comes down to pace. Yeah, and then how how hard do you push? Because at the moment they don't mm. really need to go to the very deep part. Um, KCMG Porsche, that's a slip. KCMG Toyota GR Supra, they used to run a Porsche. Um, and yeah, Martin Rump at the wheel of the KCMG car. So very, very tight in SP10. There is big drama, though, now at the Caracciola Carousel. It's the first concreted section on the lap, I'm pretty sure. Bear in mind, it might be the Schwabenschwanz, though, as well, but I reckon the jib camera is right in the middle of the... Yeah, that's definitely the Caracciola Carousel. Porsche uh, 562 in the barrier, but more crucially for everybody else, spilling, spewing radiator fluid. before it becomes speed limited. So from Maxime's point of view, he's thinking, right, I've seen the Porsche, it's way out of my way, parked up virtually next to the barrier, and then it caught that river of radiator fluid. Really, so that Katzberg doesn't have to be forever on that loud pedal, burning fuel. Oh, very nearly contact there with the... And ..bringing trailers in for the various support categories. Now there's a drama for the all-green TTS Audi. This is car 109, yes, from the SP3T division. And currently at the wheel is uh, Arndt Hallmans. Martin is about to arrive at high speed into Tiergarten in the second place BMW for Rover Racing shaving yet more speed off as he worked his way through Hohenrein careful not to clatter the barrier on the exit there jump over the lip that separates the link road from the Nordschleife from the Grand Prix track and it will whip by the Ferrari and retake the race lead
Fair enough. Um, well, no, thank you again, and um, thanks for being uh, you know persistent in actually trying to find us. It is a bit of a schlep, I'll, I'll admit. It, there is a tunnel way. Do you know how to get back, back via the tunnel? Mind you, you might need a, a media pass. It was a left and a right there, and, uh, you know, uh, it, anybody who can do that on the run is doing very, very well indeed. Very, very well Was indeed. it John Bow who famously did it around Bathurst in a supercar that was like a, an H-pattern gearbox as well? Yeah. He said, yeah, quite tough at the moment, mate. And, and when you yeah. cross the line. Yeah. Uh, by the way, a couple of people asking about us talking about Orica and the Ferrari 296. Um, it is... Right now, in fact... And this, we now think, will be, should be, the yeah. final pit stop for Ferrari number 30. I cannot believe they're going to do... You can never know with slow zones, etc. but this is the strategy they picked when they came in after 40 minutes or just over and five laps of the race. The margin of error. Yes, but it got thrown off a little, but... Um, but not by much, as you say. It, it's within the margin of error, and some of those long barrier repairs. It's been a race of attrition. You've needed, well, you, in theory, you'd need multiple bullets in the gun as a manufacturer to win. Well, Ferrari are debunking that theory at the moment. Ricardo Feller getting up onto the kerb on the rundown towards the Goodyear curve, and you just heard this bang, and it's, and like we said... Uh, Ricardo Feller in the blue and white number 16 car with something rubbing on the left rear. Puncture. Has he got a puncture? Yep, puncture for the rear left on that number 16 Sheriff Sport PHX. Coming into the pit lane, there should be plenty of time with 45 minutes and five seconds. So does that count as 46 minutes? There goes the Ferrari in front of us, down towards the first corner, retaking the lead with... 44 minutes and 45 seconds to go. And the fuel is still on. The time is still ticking away. It was a 309 or maybe yeah. been 308 GTI. Yeah, correct. He has grafted away, but he is such an attacking driver. And you can see the respect in w with which Frecadelli holds him here. The, the way that it just have... Oh, uh, Errant wheel at the Goodyear hairpin from uh, one of the BMWs. It's the number 53 car. 241. Uh, 241 car, sorry, on 53rd position. So that is the third place in 240i. What a disaster. Left rear wheel has gone. That's not just a tyre, it's a tyre and wheel rim at times. So there's that that will put this, a code 60 immediately oh. come up at the Dunlop curve, uh, where that, sorry, what was known as the Dunlop curve, now Goodyear. And a huge incident out on the Nordschleifer four with a the four kilometre mark, all we can see is a huge puff of dirt. Is there a car in there, there's yellow flags waving. Yes, there was. It was the 185 in uh, the uh, in the Porsche Cayman, and that is the Cup Three sixth position car. Seven one eight in the seven one eight Cayman, the SRS Zorg Rensport machine. <coughs> it's done damage. Twenty one years after the last non German mark. It's Orica and Ferrari as the 296 comes of age for the first time of asking and wins the 51st win it, running of the Total Energy. Dries Van is going to come up about half a minute short with his teammates from Rover Racing and BMW. But that, that was... There's honour in that run for BMW. To drama right at the very end for the triple one TSI, bright red... Uh, Chirocco that is linked round to say that they've taken their group. So they started outside the top 30 and have got all the way up into second. What a job from the drivers of that number 98 BMW. Dries Van Tor, he gave it his, his all, but there just was no answer at all from anybody for the pace of that Fricadelli Ferrari. Remarkable. They, looking through the results, there have been seven manufacturers who have won this race. A huge first major international win for the 296. On home ground for the team, but the coveted Total Energy 24-hour trophy is going to a Ferrari team that has broken more than two decades of German manufacturer dominance at the Nürburgring Nordschleife.
and it's a man that lives and operates his team from a wheel nuts throw away up the road. Abelin, on top of the world, has conquered the Nürburgring 24 hours. He's about to get soaked, I think. Do you think he'll care? Ah, I don't think he's going to care a jot, no.